here to talk about the road to free market money and banking. Uh, big, oh, you've got the big five questions. Who, what, why, what, how, and when. We'll start with who, as in, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> I haven't been to the company before. Uh, so I thought I'd introduce myself. My name's Jeff Berwick. I write uh, something called the Dollar Vigilante. It's a newsletter focused on surviving and prospering during the uh, during and after the U.S. dollar collapse and the entire monetary financial system collapse. This is something I've been doing and studying for years now. Uh, I also hold, host something that anarchists might be interested in called Anarchast. It's a video podcast about anarchy, and I interview lots of anarchists. I've had Stefan Molyneux on and many different people. Um, and uh, yeah, I started out, so I was just say, more introduction on myself, I started out as a baby, like most people. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, grew up in Canada, very cold. Uh, I was a computer nerd from day one, basically, 1980, which actually, uh, because I was just always at home on my computer, I never went to school, so I never got brainwashed and indoctrinated, so that's why I'm able to think more freely. And uh, because of my uh, background in computers, when the internet first came out, I started the internet uh, company called Softcast in Canada. It's still the largest financial website in Canada. Uh, and that company went from being in my house to almost being worth close to a billion dollars. And then it was almost worthless a few weeks later when the uh, tech bubble crashed. So that was me a few weeks before the crash, becoming a worldwide powerhouse. And then it went uh, to almost nothing. So, so that was interesting. So. So what I decided was, I wanted to know what the heck happened. How did I have this company that went from nothing to something huge to nothing, all in such a, a short period of time? So I decided I needed to travel the world and just study everything I can and try to figure out what's going on. And so I bought a sailboat and uh, I unfortunately sank it uh, in El Salvador, <laughs> trying to sail the world. And uh, so that was, uh, here's my sailboat, what it looked like at the end of that journey. Oh, oh. But they did recover it, and I sold it to someone for a thousand dollars, and they rebuilt the whole thing. Catamarans couldn't sink. That's well, yeah, it didn't sink. Look. It's just not as comfortable. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, and I ended up on my surfboard. So, but during that travel, and after my boat sank, I kept traveling the world for another five years, and I kept reading and reading, and I came across the first thing that really enlightened me was. Doug Casey, and he wrote about anarchist stuff, and I really woke up at that moment, and I went on a journey for many years and learned about uh, things like Austrian economics, and that's what actually explained to me what happens in the tech bubble. They just print too much money, and that's what causes all the bubbles. So now I, I, I've been learning that for about eight years now, and this is what I do basically for a living now. I just research this and write about it. So now that you know a little bit about me, let's talk about what. What is money? Well, money is a medium that can be exchanged for goods and services and is used as a measure of the values on the market. Many things have been used for money over time. Tea leaves, beads, cows. The funniest one is bat shit, bat one. <laughs> 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 that was actually used as money. Uh, but the bottom two are the ones that kind of won out in the end. And the reason they won out was, as Aristotle said in uh, 4th century BC, uh, money needs to be five things. At least five things. It needs to be durable. So that means you can't use wheat as, a, as money because it will rot. It needs to be divisible, so you can't uh, cut up art, for example, or diamonds uh, and be able to give someone change. Uh, it needs to be consistent, so all pieces of gold or silver are the same as all other pieces of gold or silver. So that's different than if you uh, want to use land or something like that so, so as money. It needs to be convenient, uh, that's why you don't want to use lead. Well, you could use lead as long as it's worth enough, but uh, it would just be too heavy, so gold and silver are good for that. And it needs to have value in and of itself as well. And one more Aristotle didn't think of, because he didn't know people like Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve, is it can also be created out of thin air, like the US dollar. And now this is what I want to talk about today, is why the US dollar is going to collapse. How it's going to collapse, and how hopefully we can get to a free market money after that. It's important to understand what's going to happen here. The destruction of the U.S. dollar has been going on since 1913, uh, when uh, the Federal Reserve was founded. But it actually goes back even further than that. It goes back to just democracy itself. If you want to destroy a currency, start with democracy, then go into central banking, then make it a fiat currency backed by nothing, 
and you'll end up with a ton of government debt. And that's exactly what's happening now in the U.S. And it's happening all over the Western world. But the U.S. is the worst of them all. Democracy, democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the majority of voters discover that they can vote themselves largesse of the public treasury. That's what we have in the U.S. today. This is the amount of people dependent on the government. Uh, this is a Heritage Foundation Dependency Index, uh, and it's gone up tenfold since the 1960s. This is the percent of the U.S. population living in a household receiving government benefits. It's now at about 50%. So we've now reached the point in the democracy where it all has to fall apart. Once more than 50% are net, net tax recipients, uh, that's the end of the democracy. And that's good, because the markets are horrible. <laughs> Federal Reserve, central banking, another big criminal act. Uh, it's really funny to talk about what their supposed mandate is. If you listen to the news and all that sort of stuff, they say, well, we do two things. We keep the purchasing power of the currency stable, and we also promote full employment. I don't know what promote means, but or how they would even go about it. But uh, the, the government says the unemployment rate right now is 10%, but uh, that's you never listen to what the government says, obviously. This is shadowstats.com. The blue line is just how the government used to calculate unemployment. So that was in the 1990s. If you just kept using the same methodology that they used to do, it's at 23% right now. So all they've done is they've learned how to take all the unemployment out of the unemployment figures. Now, they talked about keeping the purchasing power of the currency stable. In the 98 years before the founding of the Federal Reserve, this was uh, consumer prices. In the 98 years before the founding, the U.S. dollar lost 0% of its value. In the 98 years after its founding, which goes on a pretty big upslope there, uh, it's lost 98% uh, of its value. So, that's not bad enough. Now they have fiat currency. In 1971, Richard Nixon. I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. Thank you. So I direct the Secretary Connell to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar in the gold. Temporarily, this is what's still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and they always blame it on the speculators. Even just today, I read a news article about uh, the euro. Uh, they're going to think, they're thinking of banning all those rating agencies because they're saying what's happening is the rating agencies are saying that the European debt isn't worth very much. And that's what's collapsing the, the, uh, the countries over there. So it's the rating agency's fault. Wet sidewalks cause the rain. Wet sidewalks cause the rain. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, so. So because of all that's happened, democracy and then central banking and then having a fiat currency, because after 1971, uh, everything just got crazy. After they took away the gold backing from the dollar, that's when everything went out of control. And now you can just look at this chart. This is government debt. Now you can see up until 1971, it really wasn't all that bad. It was pretty flat. It looks flat compared to that, that's for sure. So it's completely out of, get, out of uh, control. It's $15 trillion now. Does that look sustainable to anyone here? That's a 70-year that's a chart. We're not talking this is a small chart or anything. That's, so, but that's not even the real story. The U.S. government has far, far more debt and liabilities than that. It's just how they calculate it and what they say. Under generally accepted accounting principles, the total debt of the U.S. government and liabilities is $75 trillion. So it's much larger than what they're saying. And that's because they, they don't denote things like Social Security and all those things. They don't even include that in their calculations. Because when the money comes into Social Security, that money just gets spent right away. And uh, they just give themselves an IOU, and they never include that in their, in their budget. So, and now penny in pretty much, too. Yes, and then more and that's part of government. Yeah. So we're talking about $75 trillion here. I just wanted to kind of show you what that looks like. This is $100 bills. So that's $100 million. That is $1 billion in $100 bills. One trillion dollars, starting to get up there. That's the admitted to debt of the US government right now, 15 trillion dollars. And this is what, uh, the one on the right is their debt and liabilities if they were to account for it properly. You can barely even see, see, well you can't see the initial palette, but you can barely even see a Statue of Liberty in front of that. So that just gives you some indication of sort of how things are. 
The total debt per person in the U.S., if you take that 75 trillion, the total debt liabilities, and you just divide it by the amount of population. That looks like the $250,000 per person, or a million dollars per family for, of just federal government debt and liability. Probably not payable at this point, I would think. Can every family in the U.S. pay off a million dollar loan at this point, do you think? So, it has to, this has to come to an end, and this is coming to an end. 2008 was the beginning of this coming to an end. They said, that, they said that was the financial crisis, but now we're okay, we're just in a shaky recovery. No, we're still in collapse, and all they're doing is papering it over. So, they do, they, they're going to have to do something at some point here. Things are all collapsing, uh, everything going on in Europe right now as well. Uh, the entire Western financial monetary system is in a state of collapse. They only have three options, the government. That is to inflate and eventually hyperinflate. We're, get, we're getting a lot closer to hyperinflation now. They can default on those promised benefits to the citizenry so they can say, well, we can't pay anyone any more Social Security or Medicaid. That's going to cause some interesting times in the U.S. to do that. But they probably won't do that because they're politicians and they don't want to have people angry, that angry at them. They, they don't mind if they're angry, but that angry would actually kill them, they don't want. Uh, or they can outright default on the interest in the debt. Now that would actually be their best uh, thing to do if they're gonna actually do the best thing possible for the people in the US. But politicians rarely, if ever, do that if they have the opportunity to print money to get out of it, because politicians uh, always wanna do what the easiest way is for them, and they wanna just keep the game going a little while longer. So this is going to be happening soon, but what they're probably going to do, and what they've been doing, is as long as Ben Bernanke's the chairman of the Federal Reserve, <laughs> they're going to continue to hyperinflate, and now, or inflate, which will turn into hyperinflation. Now, it might take a few more years, but we're getting into that sort of stage of this. So, let's talk about how. How will we move to a free market money? and banking system after the collapse of the U.S. dollar-based monetary system. And I just want to say this, this is going to be a battle. We're in a battle right now, as uh, Alex Jones says, it's a battle on for your minds. Um, and it really is. Uh, the status uh, wants to, uh, to basically keep uh, brainwashing people. Um, and so what's going to happen here is as the system collapses, it's going to be a battle between the people in free markets and the people who actually know what's going on, and the status who are going to try to convince people to go back into another status type system after this collapses. But really, we're all brainwashed, right? If you think about the um, education system in, in the US, or in most Western countries now, uh, public government, uh, 12 years of indoctrination, um, you know, Vladimir Lenin said, uh, give me your child for four years, and we see that plant will never be uprooted. He, he never could have imagined 12 years, and then four more years in a socialist university and that sort of thing. And then they go home and they watch these TV channels, which are all propaganda. So people, especially here in the US, but in many Western countries now are very brainwashed. You know, they don't even see things that, like school is just an indoctrination center. They're taught to believe that you know democracy is freedom when it's not voting is slave suggestion bugs. <laughs> they're taught to believe they're taught to be told that taxation isn't theft when obviously it is. And they're taught to believe the government here is to protect you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been that guy in the middle a couple times. So I, I that's how I know they're not here to protect me. So, talking about a free market for money, what will a free market look like? Well, we get some things like Bitcoin. That is actually a free market solution for money. For, if anyone doesn't know what Bitcoin is, I'm not saying it's the best money, but I'm saying I like it because it is a free market solution. That's what we need. We need 20 Bitcoins. We need people to come up with different ideas, entrepreneurs to say, I've got a better idea for money and, and see if it works. If it doesn't work, that's fine. That's how it should be. <coughs> We shouldn't be forced by gunpoint by the government to use money. What is Bitcoin? Oh, okay, so some people aren't aware, but most people knew. So, Bitcoin is something that I, I don't even know the guy's name who made it. He just came up with this idea they're going to, it's all electronic. Every single thing is electronic. 
And there are just bits on the, on the computer, that, but it's spread out like a torrent, which you might not understand if you don't have torrents. But anyway, it's a little bit complicated. But basically, he, he made it so this system can only create a certain amount of Bitcoins. And I think the max is 13 million or something. 21. 21 million, okay. It's just data. It's just data. That's right. It's, it's, it's nothing real. It's just data. But it's, com it's almost completely untrackable. It's unregulatable. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard for the government to even stop it. It's actually unstoppable because it's on everyone's computer. So every single person who uses Bitcoin, they have it. They have all the information about it. Anybody can make Bitcoin. It just takes an awful lot of work, computer work. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a difference for how they create it. But yeah, it's, it's limited how many users you make. Right. Yes, which is the important part because the most important thing for a money is there's a limit on the amount of it. As we've learned through fiat currencies, and that's how it creates inflation and hyperinflation and collapse. But my point with Bitcoin is that that is just uh, an example of what the future will be like uh, with free market money. And that would be a very exciting future. Now, talk about Bitcoin, it actually is missing one of the top five that Aristotle said. It's got the, the whole top four. It's, it's durable, it's divisible, obviously. It's uh, consistent, obviously. It's convenient, obviously. But it doesn't have value in and of itself. So that's a little bit of, a little bit of a debate. But that's fine. We can debate these things. The people can decide if they want to use them or not want to use them. But that's what a free market money, uh, that's what it would look like if we had a free market in money. Now, the other side, this is what I'm talking about. We're going to have a battle when this thing starts to collapse and the statists are really going to push for a new currency. And uh, so some people talk about the Amero, Amero here in the U.S. Uh, where they, 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 they may merge Canada, the U.S., and Mexico, sort of like the Euro. Now, I'm quite optimistic, however, no one knows what's going to happen in the future. What I believe is that they will not win. And the reason they won't win is because of the internet. We, we have, we've only really had the internet now for about 15 years and it's already educated so many people. And every day more people learn more stuff. So when this thing starts to collapse, they'll use all their propaganda to try to tell people, hey, we're gonna start up a new country, we're gonna start up a new money. <laughs> And uh, this one will be better, we promise. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it will be tough. And I also think, just look at their other things they've been trying to do. The euro is an example of, of this sort of thing. So these are these sort of financial leaks. They're trying to do the euro. Euro only uh, was put into existence a little over 10 years ago. It's already on the verge of collapse. So if the euro collapses, the US dollar collapses, the whole Western monetary system collapses, it's going to be very difficult. So I actually don't think that's going to happen. So when I hear people talking about that, I don't worry about that too much. I just worry about continuing to try to educate the public about uh, what's going on. The more that we can educate people, just send them links to what's really going on, uh, the better chance we have during this collapse. Unless the government shuts down the internet, which of course is a whole other story, which would also cause quite a few problems with Bitcoin. <laughs> so, we're in for a battle here, but we, no one knows what's going to happen. When is it going to happen? That's really the question. When will the current uh, system collapse, and when will there be an opportunity for free market money to come in? I think we're going to have to wait until it collapses. You can even see like what's going on right now. We're not going to get too much, uh, you know, even there's some states trying to put in gold and silver, um, but that's not anything huge in my opinion. I think we're going to have to see it collapse first before we'll see a free market money. Um, well, well, the answer to that, when will it collapse soon? The, I, there's no way, I've done a lot of research into this, there's no way the US dollar can exist in its current form for much more than five years at the longest in my opinion. I think really we're going to be seeing a lot of crazy stuff happening as soon as next year, even this year. Uh, and it will get incredibly crazy within two to three years, and it could collapse in that time frame. I can't see it really going much past five, because all of this debt, we have a whole system based on debt and corruption and, and, and violence, and which is what democracy and, and all those things are based on, then you're gonna have the entire system at one point, which are the financials and everything, all the people all become so indebted, and that's what, you, what we see around us today. The, all the governments are, are, are long past uh, bankrupt, and so many people nowadays are as well. 
And so this system needs to collapse and needs to be a giant purging of all this debt. And that's when we're going to have an opportunity to hopefully see some real market, free market money because not many people realize the, um, how bad the system is that we have. Because we have, for example, thanks to things like the Federal Reserve which can inflate money, inflation itself is incredibly damaging. Because what happens is when you start printing money, no one knows what's that doing to the currency. So the first people who get it, they get the benefit of the new purchasing power of that currency before everyone else. So those are generally the banks and the government and the financial elite type people, and eventually all trickles down to the bottom. By then, it's already gotten out of the system, the prices have risen, so those people at the bottom, so they're continually getting impoverished. At the same time, you never have a war uh, without a currency that can be inflated. Every single time a country in history has gone to war, if they had a gold system, they go off it to go to war, because you can't, because no one wants to go to war when you get a bill in the mail each month. And so they have to inflate it. If you got a bill in the mail each month for your, well, I guess Iraq, then they might close that one down, but if you got one for Afghanistan, you, you know, uh, Libya, or wherever you want, if you got that in your mail every, every month for years, there's no way anyone would want to do it. So they have to do it through the subterfuge of inflation. So really this system that we've had for the last 98 years since the foundation of the Federal Reserve has, caught, has been behind every single war, including World War II, all those bankers, all those guys, those are the guys who uh, funded it. Uh, none of that could have really happened if it was going to be based off the tax base of the citizens. And at the same time, it's impoverished so many. So if we can just get through this, uh, then, it, you know, there's two roads coming up. If they win, the status win, and we go back into, well, you already see what's happening, right, with we'll Occupy Wall Street and all that. There's so many people who are asking for more government control in response to the problems caused by government. So we're either going, if, we, if those people win, and I'm not saying all Occupy Wall Street, there's a lot of people who want to end the Fed and, and are angry at the government, those guys are fine. If those people win though, if the status win, we could go into a very bad period of time, which would be horrible. I'm quite optimistic, I don't think we will. I think we will hopefully get through this, it might be a couple of years sort of fairly dangerous, fairly scary years, uh, in transition, uh, and it's really important to prepare to get through those years um, over, over the next little while. So really some action points, if you haven't, prepare now for this collapse, it's coming. So if you have any assets uh, and you don't own things like precious metals, buy some gold, buy some silver. Um, don't keep, if you have a lot of money, which I know a lot of, a lot of people this time have a lot of money, from what I've been told. <laughs> That's just what I'm told, I don't know. That's, got to save from the head. As she said, a lot of people couldn't come, they just don't have enough money. But um, if you do have money and it's sitting in a bank account, get it out of there. You, at any day now, that, that bank would just be closed down. And that, that money is not really worth anything. And if you can, as well, get your money outside of your own government. If you're an American, put some money somewhere else. Uh, because there's going to be some really crazy stuff happening when they start to collapse, when governments start to collapse. They'll do anything to stay alive. They're like a living organism. And they'll take your money if they have to. They did it in 1933 when they confiscated gold. It's happened in this country before, and it's happened all over the world. This is not new stuff. It only is new to some people because they, they keep people kind of dumbed down in school that they don't know history. But this is just basic things that have happened throughout history. The other things you can do is just help to educate people and spread the info on what's going on and then really just prepare for everything to change. This is going to be, in my opinion, because the US dollar is the world's basic reserve currency right now. So all other fiat currencies are based off of it. So when this collapses, this is going to be the craziest collapse of all time because we've had all sorts of other countries have currency collapses, hyperinflations. Zimbabwe, Argentina, five or six times. Um, <laughs> yeah, Yugoslavia, like uh, so many. Um, but that was just one country, and one country's money, and no one used that money anywhere outside of that country. So if you were in Zimbabwe a few years ago and you saw what was going on, you could have took your Zimbabwe dollars and converted them to US dollars, and you would have been okay. But what's everyone gonna do when the US dollar is the one that's going to hyperinflation? So this is going to be a huge disaster. It's unfortunate because they don't have to actually hyperinflate the dollar. They could actually just do the 
sort of the right thing. There is no right thing to do anymore because it's been so screwed up by government. They could just uh, steal less. They could do that as well. There's, they could do something, but it, no matter what they do, it's hard. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> but uh, uh, you were saying that they should default. They could do the right thing. Yeah, yeah they could do the right things. But no matter what, they do, but no matter what, more honest than that, be better. Way, but. The, no matter what they do, there's going to be a major uh, depressionary period while we get through the uh, change over to whatever new thing we're going to. So no matter what, there's going to be a major depression. They've been putting it off now for a long time. And uh, the longer they put it off, the worse it's going to get. So just prepare. I, I personally, I moved, I'm not American, but I'm from Canada. But I'm expecting similar things to happen in Canada. Uh, I live now in Mexico and Argentina. I have a a uh, farm basically in Mexico where I grow all my own food and all that sort of stuff. I'm preparing for a really uh, bad few, hopefully a few months, could be a few years, depends on, again what the governments do. They can make it as really bad if, if they go, you know, the more the government gets involved, the longer it's going to be. If they actually let the free market forces happen, uh, we could get through a collapse in a matter of months. It, it'd be really bad for a few months, and that's why I say have some food in your house, own a gun, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Cause there would be no one to protect you, but there is no one to protect you now, as everyone knows with, with police, but at least there is the, uh, the mirage of protection. And that's basically it, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight up commodities and having to pull on your mattress and stuff. I mean, what country would you even move the cash to if you were trying to get it out of the U.S. system? The thing is, is that the system, the world system, is the U.S. system. Yes. So, yeah. No. This, so it's it, hard to move your money to Mars. You know, like where, yes. where do you go with that? I don't know how to move your money. Um, <laughs> now, when the U.S. dollar collapses, all fiat currencies will collapse. So all the currencies in all the world will collapse because they're all backed by the U.S. dollar. So yes, to, to take your money and put it in a chart. Pardon? Yeah. Probably, unless they back it by gold at that time. And China and Russia have said that that's where they're trying to go to right now. So it's possible, but I, you know, isn't that funny though, yeah. that we're even thinking, Americans are thinking of putting their money into China at this point, like how things have flip flop in the last 20 years. But China holds so much of our debt, you know, it's... That's yeah, but that's worthless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dollar currency is based off the production of the country. They're actually pretty... Yeah, they're back there, they're the same way they're people. Yeah, but... They're trying to do it Yes, but my point is, I, I don't, I don't, I don't own any fiat currency anywhere in the world. Uh, it's much better to own gold. Even the Chinese currency, they're inflating that right now at over thirty percent per year. So that's even close to hyperinflation right now. So no, no fiat currencies. They're all in a race to the bottom. Um, so yeah, but there's many ways to put gold all around the world. There's all sorts of places. Goldmoney.com has uh, vaults in uh, England, which I don't like because that's very tied into the American system. But they also have vaults in Switzerland. Bullionvault.com has vaults in Hong Kong. Uh, there's lots of ways to buy precious metals around the world. So that's what I do personally. I've got gold all over the world. I just put it everywhere. Yeah, because yeah, you're just hedging your bets. Anything could happen. Mm -hmm. This is a complete chaotic collapse that we're coming into, so you never know. Well, really yeah. Yeah. I mean, you kind of like mentioned like I mean, money being like kind of this medium of exchange. I mean, in the face of a collapse, that this seems inevitable. I mean, do you see it's kind of a in a transition period where you would all hopefully hopefully get like free market money, but in the transition period, you know, people using some some other forms of trying to exchange um, sure. in the form of like, I mean, I kind of think of like, I mean, I look at websites like uh, things like Kiva.org or like all these kind of social network type of activities where, you know, somebody, the like Kiva.org is like these third world farmers trying to build up a farm and they need some sort of capital from someone else to, you know, provide it and then, um, I mean, there's something about that kind of an idea. Yeah, sure. If there's like a social network where people could just you know provide capital 
in any form that they want, whether it be their own labor or their sure. own their own currency or something. You know, given that we have the technology for social networking, can we get to a point where you know government do whatever they want with money? We still have a way of interacting with each other. Totally. This is actually a pretty good time to have this class, thanks to we have the internet, and that's going to help a lot of people. But really, people are like cockroaches. <laughs> like, thanks. <laughs> I'm one too, so I know it's okay. You know, they're survivors. Uh, every, every hyperinflation in history, people have survived. Uh, you look at Argentina. Um, I, I just watched a documentary on just the other day after the last hyperinflation. These people set up these huge markets and they're barter markets. And there's people and they're all saying what well, this is worth to this and we'll trade this and that. You know, people will get by, but it'll just be a little bit scary for a little while. Uh, but yes, thanks to the internet, we should we should really have, you know, if we can have like some semblance of uh, normal life for a little bit. Uh, we can have all sorts of entrepreneurs come from amazing ways to connect people. I'm sure there's ideas I can't even imagine. So yeah, there's, there's all sorts of possibilities. But I also would own some gold, own some silver coins as well, uh, because those are great to use to buy things. You know, there's a silver coins worth about $30, so it's not, nothing too huge. You can buy some groceries with it. Um, almost everywhere in the world accept gold and silver coins, or at least know what they are in some sort of a currency situation. The only place that, that's not as good as the US, but they'll learn pretty quick once this all starts to collapse. <laughs> Do you find a way to arm yourself living in Mexico? It's uh, as a foreigner, I'm not allowed to own a gun, but I don't care what government's saying. I always do whatever I just want to do. Um, I have a Mexican girlfriend, and I I have a gun, uh, but I, it's not registered. I think you can buy anything on black market in Mexico, as the Fast and Furious guys. Uh, Showed us uh, <laughs> the U.S. government basically sells all the, all the guns to the Mexican Yeah, they show us as well. What's that? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. our first question. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to all like the loans people have, like on their house or their cars? Because I assume that when it yeah, student loans. Because yeah. I assume that the banks are going to kind of disappear. What, are you aware that student loans are the only uh, debt that is not relinquishable in a bankruptcy? Were you aware of that? Yeah. They just passed that law about five years ago. So, Matt, if you're a student, pardon? Child support. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So, child support, child support and student loans. So, if you have, let's say you have fifty thousand dollars in student loans, and you're bankrupt and you go bankrupt, you still have those debts. You still have to pay that off. And actually, what I believe is possible is the U.S. government will start to put a lot of those people who can't pay the student loans into the military. But to answer your question also, it's 50-50. It's 50-50, um, in my opinion, what's going to happen with the loan with debt. Either it will all be hyperinflated away and you won't actually owe anything, which would be nice for many people. Or, and this has happened before in France, what they did when the currency collapsed, they just said, uh, oh, well, remember the old uh, French franc? Well, now we have new ones. Whatever you owed in the old one, you owe in the new one. But you were saying you didn't think that's going to happen, right? With the uh, America? No, that's, that's, that's true. I don't know, but he, you know, we're talking about different countries might do different things. Uh, they might try to do it for a period of time. Okay. What I'm saying, though, is that we don't really know, but I wouldn't be just holding out all hope that you're just going to get rid of all your debt, it's possible you might not. Um, it's really, I, I would say to people actually get out of debt. Um, however, I've been asked many questions and I answer differently depending on the situation. If, um, if for example, you uh, wanted to buy a house and you owned $100,000 worth of gold and you're buying a $100,000 house, I've been asked, should I sell my gold and buy it or should I take out a mortgage? Obviously, take out a mortgage because you have a 50 50 shot, it'll be worth nothing in a couple of years, and plus the gold's going to go up anyway. So, I would take out loans in, in that situation, but you know, in general, just as a, a good thing, just don't get overly indebted, right? That's just, but it, it, might get, it might get hyperinflated the way it's possible. Yeah. It's talking about when it pops up, and um, I, I, I wondered if, what if the US starts paying the military to police something other than US dollars? 
Like what? Well, I guess to me in the end, it's, it's he who has the gold makes the rules, right? So, so I don't see it's going to become a police state because how is the government going to pay the police if they have no dollars to pay them? So if they start paying them something different, to just gold. To me, that'd be like that's in the end. Because based on that, do you think that's possible? Do you think they'll actually ever pay them something different? The US I've never really thought about it. It's like their last line of defense, though. Either You're saying if the, if the dollar like if was still just, existed, but. Well, when, why would when the hyperinflation comes, I would just figure, why don't the, well, the gold bugs just hire their own military? They can't They can't pay them, so how can they control them? I would say, they can't pay them. 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 They can not pay them 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 they can Start giving the police department money, and then now they the wing of the banks. Or at least the money is worthless. Right? It's become, like, hyper worth less every day, right? Yeah, we remember the banks had the advantage of using the currency before it's become worthless. So as it gets down to us, it's been diluted so much. But initially, when it first hits, hits the system, it well, not in hyperinflation. Hyperinflation is actually going down so fast, it's like by the minute. <coughs> Like why is that? By the minute, like literally in, in hyperinflation environments, people just stop trading anything because they they think that the money would be worth like it'd be almost worthless from what it's worth right at this moment, an hour from now, and they'll actually go and check the prices every hour. So in that case, you don't actually transfer wealth through. Weimar Germany, and they pay the workers twice a day. Yeah. You know, my friends in Yugoslavia told me I went there. They told me they go to the bar and they buy all their drinks. There. When you um, that seventy five trillion is the current debt plus liabilities. How far out do you project to arrive at that figure of seventy five trillion? How how does that work? Oh well, that's that's what it is in debt and liabilities right now. What they, the U.S. government has fifteen trillion in debt right now. Okay. But they've been lying about their accounting for decades. For decades, they've taken all the Social Security uh, payments that come in off of people's paychecks. They take it, they include it as income, first of all. Can you imagine a, a corporation doing that? Saying, oh, our profits are, we're making more money this year. Why? Oh, we got our employees to pay more into their pension fund. <laughs> but that's, the thing, that's what they've been doing. Right. And then they spend it all right away. So there's not one dollar in the Social Security Fund. They just, as soon as it comes in, they spend it. And so all of that is their, that's what they call those unfunded liabilities. And that's what a lot of this talk is about right now, is how they're, they're going to have to cut those uh, payments because they don't have the money. Uh, but they might go into hyperinflation to kind of pay it off is what might happen. My understanding is, is the Internal Revenue Service, first of all, is the collection department for the Fed. The United States government borrows money from the Fed. All the money they get from us doesn't even pay the interest on the money that the United States has borrowed. They're not really using the money for anything. They used to borrow money. We pay the interest. And that the money that they collect from us in income taxes is only paying portion of the interest on the debt we owe the Fed. So, some services. if you look at that cycle, that doesn't really make sense. But that's what's working. That's what's happening. The government keeps borrowing money. They need more. They print more. They collect the, the internal revenue service from us. They're paying the interest on the note that the money they borrowed from the Fed. It's the cycle. They borrow. I understand the cycle in general, but what you're saying doesn't make a lot of sense. You're saying the U.S. government is paying tons of interest to the Federal Reserve by printing more money, but that's the exactly Federal Reserve right. prints the money. So no, that's exactly that. right. The, the, the Treasury Department prints the bills and sells them to the Federal Reserve for the cost of the printing. So a $100 bill is a penny or two or something right. like that. And then the Federal Reserve loans in the United States an interest. 
Well, yes, I know that. Like like they're, 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 they're just paying down the debt. So they're paying so down the interest. That's, that's, that's all. Back. Back. I mean, I would be every, every dollar we have is actually a, it's, it's, it's not, it, it's the reverse of it. Not only does it have no intrinsic value, it, it's a debt. Oh, yes, it's a debt-based monetary system. But it's backed by the faith and goodwill of the United States government, of which there is no money. There is not a that's you mean there's no faith in or good Do you have any thoughts about uh, Fort Knox? There's conspiracy theorists who argue that all that gold is gone or at least sold in China or something. That is, is that just hogwash or is there any truth to that? I don't know. I, the only thing I do know is if you haven't seen anything for over 60 years, it's probably not there. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. No one's seen it. Yeah, especially when it's gold. Yeah. Yes. Well, and then all these these, these bars the Chinese found that were filled with tungsten. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, I agree with you that that, uh, that a collapse of the fiat currencies is inevitable, and that it's going to be a bad time following that for however long it takes. Um, my memory was jogged by something that you said when you were, were talking about Argentina. I just wanted to let people in this room know about a book that was written by an Argentinian guy who still lives in Argentina, lived through the collapse in 2001. And he, uh, the book is called Surviving the Economic Collapse, and it's by a guy named Fernando uh, Aguirre. And the book is terrific. In English? It's, not, it's not, not very well written, but what he does is explode a lot of the myths about what actually happens when a when a currency dies and a, and a severe economic collapse takes place, things like in America we think that oh we just go to your retreat out in the out in the sticks, and he says what actually happens is more people move into the cities because that's where the jobs are, and if you are and he says crime goes up a lot, you have to have a gun, police can't do anything, um, if you. Uh, if you do move out to the sticks, there's no way that you're going to be able to stand guard 24 hours a day. And if there's a road near your place, other people can get to it. And instead of robbing you, they rape and torture and then murder and then rob on the way out the door. So it's it's a I think it's a really valuable book um, to read to understand some of what actually happens in the real world when these sorts of things take place as you know, related to What's it called? what happened in Argentina. It's called Surviving the Economic Collapse. Is it in English? It's in English. Oh, what was the guy's name? Fernando Aguirre, A-G-U-I-R-R-E. -R -R -E. And, and he has a blog also. And then at 445, Rich. I have a one, We have one minute. I saw this guy first, and I'll give you some message. What type of silver coin do you feel will be most exchangeable for goods and services? <coughs> Any. Any? Oh, well, they'll be able to recognize it that this is a... I'll say you can weigh it. There's different ways. Uh, definitely, the, you know, if you're going to live in the U.S., you might as well have the silver American coins, right? Because that's the most recognized here. But believe me, when the time comes that you need to get something and there is no money in the system, no, no U.S. dollars or anything like that, and you need to transfer something and that guy wants what you need, if you've got a silver coin from, he's never even heard of the country, he'll take it. Yeah, bullying is bullying. Okay. Is it possible that the scenario won't be like hyperinflation, but a very steady inflation, but not like hyperinflation? Well, that's what we're saying now. Right. Uh, so they have a choice. They either default on those debts or go into hyperinflation. That's their choice. Okay. And if, but So if they have a choice, then... If they go into hyperinflation, wouldn't they just undermine? If they, if they can't even, if the status can't even pay their own police to protect them, yeah. wouldn't that undermine their, their, their power? So yes, but you have to remember that almost all of the uh, status and economists in the world study Keynesian economics. And every single hyperinflation that has ever happened, they believe, and you look at back at Weimar hyperinflation, the currency had been inflated by 10,000%. And you had economists going crazy saying, the problem is we need more money. Because their belief is that what happened is, is some sort of a liquidity trap. Yeah. And, and so because when hyperflation starts happening, the money's moving so fast, people are just trying to get rid of it, that it appears like there's not that much money. Like, no one's got money. Where is it? It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's like, print more. And that's what they've done every time.
So you're saying Ben Bernanke really believes that's that what he believes. Yeah. He really, yeah. he really, he really believes that. that. I, I just see it as like after so many lessons in history is that that even those in, in that essence, even those people know, like they know what the they're doing. Stuff. And yeah. I don't think that they would allow hyperinflation. I think that they would just have a long, constant, steady collapse. It's not. I, I, we've been waiting for this for 30, 40 years in the libertarian movement. Of just this one day, just like it's gonna, it's collapsed. It's done like for, you know, this year. It's gonna happen. But I think it's just been a steady decline, and everybody's just gonna get acclimated slowly but surely with the lower and lower. Yeah, but that's, it's gotten to the point now with the debts that they can't. That's why everything's starting to collapse now. So they, the only way to even pay any of this stuff anymore is to compete, to, uh, continue to inflate. Yes, but you said they have a choice between hyperinflation. You said they have a choice. Well, they, they don't really. There's there's no proven point where you hit hyperinflation. It's a, it's a human phenomenon. Right. As soon as a certain amount of people start to think, "Whoa, have we get rid of this?" There's nothing they can do at that point. Yeah. Isn't that like animal spirits? Well, no, that's that's Keynes who said that. So that's but yeah, no, that's. I think it's important, it's important to remember that every ruling class in history has benefited from chaos, from the Black Plague sure. to the Weimar Republic. And it's interesting because the Germans have this experience with hyperinflationary episodes, and today there's a bunch of regions there where they're trying to print their own regional currencies. And you can read about it on uh, NPR, if you don't need a sleep or you'll see the uh, radio interview or a bunch of other websites. And something interesting about these regional currencies is that obviously it's not recognized outside of the region. And they have a timeline on the actual bill. So a bill's put into circulation and it's got three months before it's starting to be devalued. So you can't save in terms of these regional currencies, but as far as velocity goes within the region, it's something that businesses are accepting and uh, you're able to get good for them. So there's maybe some example there from people who have experience with uh, not only Nazism, but hyperinflation. Yeah, and the Germans know more than most people what's, what's happening right now in the US. I think we got to call this up, right? Um, it well, it's it's like a break time, and oh. I suppose. Well, if anyone wants to leave, feel free to leave. I won't be offended. If anyone wants yes. to stay and ask questions, feel free. Yeah, yeah. The, the people who leave, yeah, okay. don't sure.